Okay, what up ladies and gents, it's your favorite Asian robot right here. Hopefully, your favorite official content creator for the First Ascendant. And today, I'm gonna go through the basic leveling build for Freyna. Okay, this is a basic build designed to just help you start your leveling journey. This is by no means the end game build. I am working on that immediately. But this is the basic build to get you started. Now, here is what you need to know. Okay, um, I'm going to show you what I'm using. I'm going to show you the basics. I'm going to demonstrate in the 400% infiltration. But at the end of the day, you still need a good gun. Okay, a good gun is important, especially if you want to level up fast. Okay, a couple other things to uh, talk about. Um, before we go on, if you haven't yet registered me as a content creator, or if you have registered me more than a month ago, but you haven't renewed your support yet, please hit the link in the video description. I am counting on your support because the more support we have, the more that I can do for you. So if you like the content, you like the videos, please do register me as your creator. Second, my collaboration with Yume is coming out tomorrow. If you guys want early access, just head to the stream and type in exclamation mark Aloha and you can get 10% off Yume gear. All right, look forward to that. All right, let's get into this. Now, here is the Freyna build. All right, we're going to start from the top as we always do. Let me just quickly remove my camera. Your reactor, a toxic tech reactor is obvious. Toxic skill power boost and skill duration up are pretty much what you need. All right, I found this to be sufficient and this has worked well. I do not, <laughs> excuse me, I do not use a gold reactor. I use a purple reactor because I find that it is better in case I want to level up weapons as well. All right, so mine just has a scout rifle. That's why I've got the blue beetle here. Activates the condition. We're good to go. In terms of your external components, you want HP, module drop rate. If you're going to be, obviously you're going to be using this for farming. Um, HP, MP, consumable drop rate, defense, defense, uh, shield recovery in combat or MP recovery modifier, either is fine. Max HP, max shield, shield recovery. You don't have to use specific components. I just threw together whatever just to see if it'll work. And it does. Of course, there are better components that you could pick out for her. But so far, I'm using this. Again, this is the basics for leveling her up. I make the assumption that you've got the components, but you may not necessarily have sets or things like that. So I just threw this together. Works fine. Okay. Now, you understand the reactor and the external component. Let's talk about weapons. In terms of your weapons, I'm just using whatever I like. Again, the only thing that I would probably recommend is having an Enduring Legacy. Again, I have not changed the build. This is the exact same Enduring Legacy build that you'll see. This is just to handle bosses in the 400% mode. Without this, you'll be a bit more miserable trying to fight bosses, okay? Nazastra's Devotion is pretty standard. Uh, um, I use it so I can run around faster since it has a sprint speed, as you guys know, of about 800, okay? Okay, Blue Beetle is just to activate my reactor. I haven't worked on it at all. And that's about it for weapons. Okay, you understand reactors, external components, weapons. Easy peasy. Now, the modules. Okay, I have made this on the assumption that you will have at least an energy activator put into this. If you do not have that, you are going to suffer uh, a little bit. I wouldn't say tremendously, but a little bit. It's going to be a bit less efficient. If you really want the build without the energy activator, please check my YouTube shorts after my evening stream. It will be posted there. I do not recommend that unless you're really, really on a shoestring budget. You cannot have an energy activator for here or you're going to wait like eight hours to get one, then fine, use that. But realistically, put an energy activator in, at least get 80 module capacity, and then, you know, you can start leveling. Now, if you want to start your leveling journey with Freyna, then here is what you have to do, all right? You want to have midair maneuvering, standard, sub-attack slot. Contagion, some people say it's not necessary, some people do say it's necessary. Okay, um, let's first remove Contagion, right? The spawn rate of your toxic puddle is 50%. When you add in contagion, is that a contagion of room zero trauma surrounds the target. It does not actually change the spawn rate of the puddles. It's literally the same. All right. So contagion range, when the target is killed, it will deal damage in a radius around them. All right. Um... It will basically spread continuously. So this is why it's called contagion. It spreads in a six meter radius. Without this, all right, take note that the room zero trauma is that when you kill an enemy with room zero trauma, there's a 50% chance to spawn a toxic puddle. 
Room Zero Trauma deals continuous damage to enemies and applies the toxic reaction to your enemies within that radius. That's about it. So there is no um, there's no additional explosion. All right. So do you need contagion? The answer is up to you. Some people feel that they do. Uh, some people feel that they don't. Um, I personally still use contagion because I find it very useful, but the choice is yours. It's seven points. Uh, it's up to you whether you want it or not. You could put in any other, any other transcendent mod that you want. Sorry about the coughing, by the way. Still easing off into spring, and in spring there's pollen. So there you go. Anyway, um, that explains the transcendent mod of what it does. Basically, it just causes them to explode when they die, which inflicts a slight bit of AOE, room zero trauma, all the usual stuff. So you don't have to use it if you don't want to, but I like to use it. Okay. Now for your actual modules. Increase HP is your survival. Put that in. Skill expansion is your first main utility, and increasing the skill effect range is excellent. Without that additional skill effect range, you are not going to be able to spread your toxins far and wide. Focus on tech and focus on toxic are both important because they reduce skill cooldown and increase the power of your toxic skills. All right, and all of your skills that deal damage are tech, except for defense mechanism, but you don't have to worry too much about this one, okay? You'll mainly be using Venom Trauma, Putrid Venom, Venom Baptism, all that kind of stuff. So these two. Then Nimble Fingers will further reduce your skill cooldowns, allowing you to bring your main skill down to about 5.3 seconds together with time distribution. All right, um, some people said, well, why don't you use Multi-Talented or something else like that, you know, when you trigger defense mechanism you could get even more cooldowns etc etc so on and so forth or why not use mp conversion to get even more cooldowns um i personally believe in striking a balance and one thing which i will say is that for this particular build i have balanced it between the need to actually cast skills and how much mp you're going to have while you're leveling because when you're at level one you're not going to have a lot of mp spamming skills is not going to be helpful to you so in order to maximize this i just felt nimble fingers was good enough Time distribution increases your HP, reduces skill cooldown by a bit. It's good enough. All right. Then you've got maximize range to maximize the effects of your stuff, giving your toxic puddles like 11.5 meters range. Good enough. All right. This will absolutely decimate hordes. Now, you've seen the build. You've heard me talk about it. I'm sure you guys would like to actually see it in action. So let's go do that right now. And then you can enjoy. This is for leveling. My friend is currently leveling level 19 right now. Of course, I've advanced it beyond this, but... If you want to know what else to add, um, the end game version will come out day after tomorrow. So, yeah, day after tomorrow will be fine. Okay, so you can look forward to that. All right, let's go. Private operation, 400% infiltration. Uh, in case you cannot see that, 400%. But I think it'll be pretty obvious once I go in. All right, let's go. <coughs> Okay, Nazastrus first, because when running around, you want to be fast. Now, the end game version of this increases your power even further. So be aware of that. If you're fighting against toxic creatures or creatures that have more toxin resistance, uh, it'll take longer to kill them. All right. My current version of the build is way stronger because I've added uh, a lot of stuff as I've, you know, gone up in levels. But this will work just beautifully for whatever you need to do. I thought it'd be good to showcase it here, where enemies are somewhat resistant to toxic. Um, do you take note that uh, I'm more or less taking it slow? Because, like I said, during the leveling process, you're not going to have a lot of MP. So, you are going to have to be pretty careful with uh, how you spend your MP, what you spend it on, that kind of thing. You can rely on your guns to get you through. Alright. The guns will help you through most things. But do try and get groups of them, especially during the running sections. If you try and get groups of them, they'll just die fast, spread the toxins. It works way better when there's more points of spread. What does that mean? When there's a lot of guys like that, that's when you get to really have some fun. And of course, you can toss in another puddle for even more DOT and then everything dies. So 
Rely on that and you'll be able to kill 400% even by yourself. Realistically, when you're first leveling, you should not be uh, fighting alone. It would actually be a lot wiser if you would fight with other people, but I'm here to showcase the effectiveness of this. So just uh, enjoy the screen being covered in numbers right there. So, yep, just take it slow, you know. Um, Keep the poison going, snipe out anybody else who challenges you, and you're pretty much good to go. Alright. Like I said, this will work for leveling and for, you know, building up your character and whatnot, but ultimately, if you want to get the best results, you have to go a little bit further than that, alright? Now, if you do take some damage, unfortunately, you will have to suffer a little bit. But for the most part, you'll be able to get health along the way. Again, I would recommend playing in a team if it's your first time. If you're not prepared for this, you might need a bit of help. Alright, so I will say that much. Try not to take too many hits. And again, yeah, if you're facing against toxic resistant enemies, this is good for the basics, but it's not going to get you through. Alright? It's not going to like be super effective yet. It'll get you through. Sorry, I should have said that. It'll get you through, but it's not like super hyper effective or anything. You're also going to need your gun. At the very least, initially. Now later on, once you start going for my endgame stuff, now that's a lot better. That one, I just don't even care anymore. I just absolutely sh murder everything. But even with just the basics, it's good to see them fall, yeah? Oh. This one particular 400% has this weird um, idiosyncrasy where you have to actually touch this location. Not quite sure why. Okay. Excuse me for the mispress. As per normal, spread your venom. Do your thing. Let everybody suffer. As they should. Okay. Be aware that this particular map has snipers. So actually gonna have to go up here. Start dealing with them. Ah, good. More of them are dying. Grand. If you need a little extra defense, just activate your defense mechanism. It can work wonders. <laughs> Too many souls dying. That's wild. Excuse me, good sir. Too many of you. I need some breathing room. Nice. Much better, right? You have to always kill the snipers here, so while everything on the ground floor dies, you actually have to come up here and murder these bug spreaders. There we go. Now after all that, you collect your loot. Okay. And on we go. I'll just ignore some of the guns because you get so many anyway. Feel the pain. Don't hesitate to cast long and spread the toxin. Let it all spread fast. Yes. Oop. I keep forgetting that that's glass. 
Uh, that's literally just a glass window that you cannot get past. There we go. Now we're talking. Like I said, you don't need contagion, but the effectiveness of it is more felt, especially when you have lower power and uh, more enemies surrounding you. Yeah, that's where you really feel the benefits, I guess, of contagion. However, it has an even greater effect even later on because it can be super helpful in completely wiping out most of your enemies. So, don't hesitate to apply it. It's good stuff. Yep. I did see a purple mod back there, but I'll have to leave it be for now. Okay, now the boss room. This is where stuff gets fun. So, when dealing with the bosses, here's what you gotta do. Get rid of the aerial units first. Spread your poison where you can. I shouldn't say aerial units, I should say get rid of the snipers first. Okay, once you've gotten rid of the snipers, you'll need to look for the boss and isolate the boss clone neckbet. Well, in this particular case, uh, I usually give tips for the other bosses when I'm on stream, but for this particular one, isolate Neckbet because he's easy to kill. So once Neckbet is nicely isolated, he will start suffering. That's good. Get rid of his immunity orbs and he will die very fast. Do take health where you need to, and then... If you use your ultimate on neck bet, he gets murdered very quickly. He does teleport though, so be careful. If you die, unfortunately, this will reset. So again, be very careful. When you're new, I don't recommend uh, doing this alone. Okay, you're going to have a really bad time. Yep, next bat will spawn again. By the way, if you die, you have to start from the beginning, so please be very careful. Um, neck bat, you must get him through his first phase first, so I would highly recommend doing that. Jump while firing, and he should be less of an annoyance to you. Okay. If you have to, go and kill some other targets. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. And again, the snipers, they're a big deal, so make sure you wipe them out quickly. Ooh. Hey, Dina Plaudia. <sighs> like I said, a bit more frustrating when you haven't really done anything yet, but if you want to get through the 400s, perfect play is important. I didn't take out the snipers that time, so my apologies. Doing it solo, not recommended. Because I get way overconfident, because I'm already used to the stuff that I've gotten past this. My first few times that I was catalyzing, I did it um, with other people, so it was a lot easier, but yeah. Later on, obviously, I started doing it just like this. Which you guys would have seen on stream, but again, I had already uh, leveled up way past the basics. Okay, kill Neckbat again. Dodge as much as you need to. Neckbat must die first. Okay, great. This time there's plenty of health on the ground, so I'm okay. See you later. Okay. This is where the fun begins. Okay, remember, like I said, Negbet must die first no matter what. Once he dies, Plaudia is nothing. Okay, Negbet down. Now! We go murder Plaudia. Ok, 
Okay, is the venom necessary? No. But the venom is for the minions. What you're here to do is use my Enduring Legacy build. Especially if you're going to level up in 400s. Right from the get-go, yeah, you're going to want to kill Plaudio with, with the Enduring Legacy to the head. Okay, once she teleports and moves, you got to do the same thing. Okay, her attack pattern is just spamming those uh, things on the ground. So, you don't have to sweat too much. Just aim for her head and she'll die. She doesn't actually do that much damage either. So... This is why Nekbet is more of a threat than she is. Um, again, please be very careful. Okay, spread the toxin only to kill the minions. You don't really care about using it on Plaudia and it wouldn't work either way. And just spam bullets at her. And you'll win. Once you reach this stage, it's a guaranteed victory. And there you go. Alright, so we got through this completely solo using nothing but the basics. I don't recommend going solo at first, but this will get you through, all right? If you really must go solo, be very careful and you need to know exactly how to kill the bosses in each of the 400%, uh, especially if you're leveling here. If you don't want to level here, you can go elsewhere, but the 400% is the most fun. So yeah, it will take you a while if you want to get through it, but I hope this demonstration helps you guys out. Sorry about dying twice. Unfortunately, like I said, with the basic build, it's not so easy to solo this and I don't recommend it, but often... When I do these demonstrations, it is extremely important that I showcase the solo play so that you guys understand just how difficult it might be. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All right. And if you haven't yet, make sure you become one of the supporters. I'm still unable to get the member list for some weird reason. But anyway, here's October's top supporters. Thank you to our top tipper, Anonymous, $500. The other top tippers include another Gary, Rafi Jana. Top super chatter is CU Yuri. Thank you so much. Other top super chatter is also George Tishon. He's got the same amount. Uh, D Rust, Track Hoodie, Lawbreaker, Chanel Name, Sir Tommy Gun, Ted Wu, Craig Ricketts, South Goblin. All top super chatters. Thank you guys so much. And for the top channel membership gifter, Haza with 10 gifted memberships. The rest are Arcane Silver 300 and Jonathan Terry. Thank you guys so much. See you guys on the next video. Y'all have a good one.